welcome back to something a little bit different but probably quite the same and that is we're in a little bit of a different place today we're in front of another 64 work 64 foot of work that these two have decided it would be a good idea to go and get so welcome to meet the fleet welcome to meet set l432 and um, let's start the video off by telling you a little bit about this unit why we've got it why it's here and uh, all the other units that we have so that you can understand a little bit more about the journey we have ahead of us and why it's going to be such a long one and hopefully a good one to watch so let's get into it all right guys here is tcl 59520 our new center car formerly out of set b430 and also l430 so only two numerical characters away from our actual set l432 uh, this vehicle is indeed the famous one that carried the chocolate and cream livery for the GWR 150 year so celebrations along with the bubble car. Um, the vehicle as you can see has had some attempts at work in the past. Um, this will all be going. Uh, it's not in too bad a condition. Luckily it's quite structurally sound on initial examination. The interior as we found it was quite a bit of a state. Uh, vandals had got in there chuck some paint around and um, smash windows and things and just made it not a very nice place inside so we've spent today um, mostly cleaning that up it's all been swept out hoovered and it's looking a lot better for it um, unfortunately we have lost a few windows but we do have spares to replace these um, and she will be getting tarped up and put into storage until we've completed the power cars in which case, once that's done, we will then bring her into the shed and she will then go in and have her overhaul and be fitted with a bath, which is a, a future thing for you guys to see. Um, it's not gonna be easy, but we've got a, a few styles in mind and a few places where we could put it. And uh, it will definitely make the vehicle very useful along with the toilets, um, which the two power cars don't have. One unfortunately has a lot of ingress around the other side uh, of water that's not due to the toilet leaking that's just simply due to it's had the gutter taken off for so long and left out in the elements when it was at um, Meldon quarry um, now that it's here obviously it's a bit more sunnier in Norfolk and drier but it will be under the tarp and then we'll, we'll get to replacing the floor in the future and yeah she'll have the necessary work and then join the power cars Right guys, now we're in the interior in the first class. As you can see, the vandals have hit it unfortunately in places. Um, we'll get to that more in a second. Um, the bodywork around here is minimal. Uh, as you can see, it's not got the usual water ingress uh, um, telltale marks, but it will need attention uh, just like the others. If we go through into the next saloon in the first class, we can see the vandals have hit this into partition window that's been having some sort of repairs in the past needs to say we'll just replace all of that with new steel um, and then there's windows dotted about in here that have been smashed uh, seats that have been cut just by the little tow rags uh, we'll keep it PG at that point um, but yeah not too much work compared to the others it will be getting a full new interior just like the other two units as well except the first class will be carpeted instead of having a conventional lino. Um, in here is the toilets. Again, more vandalism in the form of chucking paint around and some graffiti, unfortunately. Um, the toilets, like I said, they do need a bit of work, but aren't in bad condition compared to others, which the problem with 117 centre cars is the toilets tend to go spongy. Um, luckily, ours aren't, only because of the water ingress that it has going to need to have a little bit of replacement. Again, more vandals, paint on the seats, which is rather annoying. Um, when we actually viewed this vehicle, it, the second class was completely untouched, no vandalism, no smashed windows. But because of issues with a certain haulier and uh, not delivering on what they promised, um, that's a story for another time, that uh, it got vandals, hit it a bit more when it was at Meldon Quarry, unfortunately. But now it's here get it tarped up and then she's got a bright future ahead of her. As you can see, the second class isn't in bad shape. The seats are actually quite nice. They will get reupholstered because they are a bit life expired to say the least. Again, same with the lino. <clears throat> and then in the saloon that Johnny is now kindly stepping into, 
uh, is where we propose, to, we're thinking we're going to put a bar. So what we'll do is we'll keep this side of two seaters um, and maybe have a shuffle around, put a three seater here so people can sit and wait for the bar if they want. Uh, sort of a bit of open plan, spacious feel. These seats will then be going. These are two three seaters. And then the bar will be going in here, uh, all the way next to where Johnny is standing. That little two seater will stay where it is for the bar staff to have a break, a well earned break with uh, all the beer drinking customers we're going to hopefully be having. Um, so yeah, it should be a nice open big bar. We'll hope to uh, um, be serving lots of refreshments, pastries, all sorts. We have big plans for it. Um, so yeah, you'll get to see our bespoke made bar that we're going to create and uh, follow us along that journey. And it should become a nice little, a nice little addition to the fleet, this vehicle. So now, Paul will talk you through 51370. Right folks, this is DMBS 51370. DMBS standing for Driver Motor Brake Second. Uh, as you can see, heavily stripped out we, when we were at our previous location. Uh, we had started work on the roof and we'd taken out the insulation. Uh, and back down here, we started um, treating some of the panels. But with 51412 being the better vehicle to return to traffic, uh, we've decided to crack on with that and then 51370 be the next one for treatment. Uh, see, this is a big challenge you can see from some of the, the panels here, which we'll see more of when we come outside. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new panels and metal work going in here, but which is good. Uh, we want to pan round to the cab. Uh, all the gauges have been pulled out. There's a we've got all the spares that need to go in there. All the, all the gauges that we require. It's uh, looks a bit of a basket case, but we've got everything. So it's uh, obviously going to be a challenge, but it's one we're ready to accept. Right folks, this is the, uh, believe it or not, the better side of 5137 though. There's no doubt about this is going to be our greatest challenge of the three vehicles that we have. Uh, we do have a lot of um, parts that are missing from underneath, but we do have uh, all those parts uh, in, in storage. So we'll uh, get these um, uh, back on, refurbish them back on as we go. Uh, that is going to be a few years down the line. Uh, this is... Uh, Generally a lot of uh, under frame work to do. And this is one of the worst panels uh, that we've got to get rid of on, on this side. I say uh, in general, not too bad, but this is definitely one of the panels that's got to go. You can see we've got a tarp up in, uh, in various places, but we do have an all over tarp that we're gonna be putting on her uh, at some point before the winter really sets in. Now this is the worst side of uh, 51370, not helped by the fact she was kept under a tree without a tarp on for a very long time, which has uh, helped uh, rot her out quite badly. Um, a lot of water ingress, we're going to lose a lot of these panels along here. Um, so say pretty much uh, all but two possibly, you can see how bad it is here. Obviously we've managed to cover this because obviously this was a uh, a waterfall in places so we've managed to arrest that now coming up to uh, this part of the DME at the back which is the uh, guards and uh, luggage area this will be very satisfying when we've cut out this metal work and uh, put in new which with the team I've got uh, it, I'm very confident we'll uh, have sorted and you know, it'll look lovely when, once we get it back uh, we've got a door uh, missing door here where it basically just fell off uh, we will uh, we have got a replacement door which uh, has been refurbished and we'll go back on the vehicle once we get to tackle this um, I would say that we'll be tackling it uh, through 2024 2023 is finishing off 51412 and uh, we'll start on this um, in 2024 as you can see a bit rotten there but yeah, it gets a little bit better, but obviously it's still got the rot from down the bottom here. But yeah, stay uh, stay with us for the next few years, and this this really will be something to see and change. Um, uh, yeah, basically this is our Lazarus project. It's going to rise from the dead and and, and 
be something to behold the before and after. I'm really looking forward to seeing this and I know we can do this project and uh, get her up and running um, certainly nice and watertight again. Uh, it's got a lot of doubters on us for this one um, but it'd be, it'd be nice to uh, prove those doubters wrong which it's always nice to do. Now over to Johnny on DMS driving motor second 51412 which is under shed uh, in our current project we're working on at the moment. So, welcome to 51412 DMS, driver mode second. As you can see, this is probably a best angle, and if you've been following along with the videos, you would have known that we've just painted this. So, let's take you through her. Front, all done. Rebuilt the cab in about six days. Come to the underframe, before we even got in the shed, we did all of this, it took us about three or four days to do all that. Front bogey's been done. So, let's move along. This panel here, completely replaced. Uh, which is often, well we're finding often going to be the case with these panels, they need to be replaced. For the door strip we have done a 5 metre long handrail repair on the top, um, which is, well we got to think about 19 metres total we worked out to do on this unit. So uh, yeah, just the start of a uh, marathon on that one. But as you can see, we come along here, we've done everything we can really do on the bottom, because she does need a lift. We've got a final drive cog on the back that is shattered so we do need to lift her and put one of our spare bogies underneath her front one's all good she will pull herself along but it's not ideal when we're going to be eventually having a three tire unit as you know so we come along <coughs> engines they all run they run about four years ago um, now uh, one of them does breathe a little bit heavy but that's nothing we can't sort we've had a few bits of information from some people kind of know what they're talking about so that is going to be interesting when we get to that so all the exciting things to come along here <clears throat> we finally get to the end of our cat rail repair which just gives you a bit of a scope of really how much we've done so come along here we get to this panel which you've seen us replace <clears throat> we also find ourselves at a smith's heater now we've got two smith's heaters uh, they both work but only one of them heats we still need to work out what's going on with the second one uh, I believe this one works and the one on the other side doesn't, it just blows air and smells of diesel which is always nice. So, uh, But yeah, we can get a toasty in here, just takes a little while, but that is something that yet again you're going to see us go through. And now we get on to this panel which you're about to see in probably next episode that will be coming out. We'll be ripping this out, we'll be showing you how you do that and uh, really taking you through what we do, how we do it. We've also got guys to get off etc etc, but I'll go through all that in that video. Here is the bogey that is, well, a little bit destroyed. It's still got nice tyres on it and everything, so it's not like it's a complete waste. If need be, you could strip it down and use it for other things. But final drive's done. Got the gearbox, got extra cars and stuff. We've got all the spare parts we need so that when we come to lift it, we can lift it, which we are planning to do here. We don't know roughly when that'll be, maybe in a few years, it depends. Um, the railway's still got to set up everything to do that, so uh, we'll be waiting on them. But. It's not like we, uh, we're in a rush really, because we've got probably about 12 years of all of this to do for all three of them. But, so, that's our last bogey. Now, let's take you to our worst side. So, this is the second man side. As you can see, this is really the state we got her in. Uh, admittedly, there wasn't so much filler in her and um, cloth, but she was just had a green coat of paint, as you can see. And we didn't really get onto this side at our previous location. But it doesn't matter, because we'll get onto her probably in the new year. That is our goal, so very ambitious. You might see a video come out at the end of end of January, early February. That's the plan. Could always change. So this is our worst side. Um, this is that front panel. We seem to have a problem with these front panels just on this unit. I think it's because of the way it's stored. But as you can see, bogies are done underneath. Frameworks are done. But this, we need to strip all the gutter off. Strip. Well, we need to take this panel off. We think. This not going to be a lot saveable on this, so this might be a whole panel take off. It will definitely be coming off the window for sure. Um, we've got another 10 metres of cat rail repair to do all along this unit. We've also got an old repair that we did, um, that was fun. Um, but we learned from it, so we're ripping it out and we're doing it properly this time. Um, so, panel number one will be coming out. Panel number two will also be coming out. Um, panel number three, we don't quite know yet. We have to strip this all back, but it could be coming out. Panel number four, we think it's pretty good looking at pictures and obviously what you can see here because uh, we didn't have to go back to old pictures we took of the unit before we painted it in red. Uh, what a mistake that was, but that was all good. 
fun learning curve and it survived the winter a few good times so yeah it'll do but we we you know we can see what we need to do now so this panel we think be all right yet again cam rail has started to go a little bit more over there you can see here uh, when we've had a bit of a bit of time off we've been able to uh, just take a little bit more off the doors as and when um, this panel will be staying um, come down here got another one of the engines this is the uh, this is the one that breathes a little bit heavy I believe um, but she still works uh, had to do a little bit of a little bit of a bodge to get her running because we had the we had to change what the EP valves were doing so we could run her as a compressor because we were having trouble building up the vacuum. Uh, so that is also something we're going to be investigating when we lift her, you know, take her to bits and uh, find out what the problem is there. But those are all things to come in the future. So if you are enjoying it and, uh, you know, you watched episode nine and you really enjoyed it and you're thinking, oh, you know what, is this really my thing? Well, if, we, if you want to know about mechanicals and see some guys that have got absolutely no clue in mechanicals, learn their way slowly through it and bring that to you, then subscribe because we have got so much coming. So here you can see a little bit more. This, we're taking the top half of this panel off. It's screwed. I think actually we're taking that panel out as well uh, while we're at it. Uh, this is Smith's heater that uh, doesn't work, I believe, but it blows air through it, which is quite nice. But yeah, and you can see as the gutter, you can see a bit of that rust jacking that has really started to push the gutter out, uh, which is you know, a sign to us that it is it's really gone there. It really has just, just, just blown it out, really. Um, so we, you know, that's going to be something you're going to see. This was, well, this is funny because <laughs> well, we thought, ah, you know, we did patches, just yet, you know, that whole thing's coming up. Or well, the whole bottom half of it, at least. We might do the top half, depends how bad it is. I mean, we did try and repair this at a previous place. So we do have a little bit of an inkling of how bad it is. But yet again, so another panel, it's probably going to come out. And we move on, coming to the end now. We've got this top small panel. Yeah, complete right off. No real need to explain that. Then we've got this panel, which we think we can say there's a little bit of camp rail rot. You can tell from the gutter pushing itself out a little bit at the end, but we can see it from the inside. We know what's coming, um, so that's going to be fun. So I think we've got a total of about four panels to uh, come out, which will probably be our first job in the new year to just completely rip them out. Uh, take all the windows out first, of course. Now, coming on to the back. So here we have actually begun a little bit of work. Um, we, we did need to run this at and you know get rid of all the paint at our previous location um, but we just left it you know we're gonna have to remove this corridor connection that's something that we want to do because we can you know it's advisable to remove it because it does hide some hidden nasties and we've got the facilities here to do it so why not <coughs> makes a good video at least eh? but we'll completely be restoring that making sure everything behind is okay because on the other side it looks a little bit worse this side doesn't look too bad but so yeah, we have taken off. We, we didn't decide to paint it at that time and we haven't decided to paint it now because we'll be getting rid of all the clutter in here. So um, yeah, then we'll be doing that. But as far as the back goes, it's going to be quite interesting because we will be taking the bean cans out of the, out of the uh, exhaust system. So hopefully we get a nice authentic sound. And uh, when we take these off, the um, silencers at the back, um, we might start her up to see how she sounds because uh, we want a good sound in DMU. We want people to really hear it leave the station, but not to be quite, not to be coarse. Um, so we will do a little bit of experimenting with that. But as far as the back goes, we just need to take the corridor connection off and kind of just need to poke around at it, see what's there, because oftentimes it will look good on the outside. You start digging and you go, aha, we need X, Y, Z meters of foam replacing, and then um, put the skin back on or some new skin back on. So yeah, that is 51412, so let's go to the outro. Right guys, that concludes our video on Meet the Fleet. You've met all three of our vehicles, including the new arrival, the Seneca car, 59520. We hope you uh, like you what the content is in the future, and you're looking forward to it all, and uh, I'll hand you over to Paul now. Yes, uh, I hope you also enjoy the uh, video of us and our trip out to Ross and Warwickshire um, in the summer. Uh, that was um, showing us driving their free car 117 and where we eventually aspire to uh, get to with our unit of similar facilities just in the Luton Limerick. Yep, so that, that concludes this video. I did forget to mention about the timelines. Uh, 412 has got about another year left in the shed. Then aspirational 
we would, our aspirations are for then 370s to come in. That should be about another three years because she's a lot worse as you've seen. And then uh, hopefully it should be a quick, uh, you know, year, nine month in the shed for the Senate car, body work wise, because uh, there really isn't much going on wrong with her. So, and then, you know, you'll see us do all those interiors. So we reckon roughly, you know, we've got another two years before 412 is pristine and nice as we want her probably about another seven years until we get 370 to that same stage obviously these are you know very large estimates because it's better to you know aim to be in front of them than to rush ourselves so um, by in about seven years nine years we should have a two car and then in 12 years we're thinking we should have a nice three car because we'll get onto that center car get the body work done uh, the plan is for Paul and Scott uh, to work on the interiors while me and Michael start taking to bits the exteriors. So we're hoping to get a kind of like a, a Ford production line of the EMUs going here uh, to hopefully make it as efficient as possible so that hopefully, you know, very soon you can actually ride on this. Well, not very soon, give it a decade, but you know, you get what I mean. We're aiming to do it in obviously less time, uh, but you can come along for that journey. You can see all the hiccups, the, the setbacks, and um, see how we solve them. So thank you very much for watching. Here are a few clips, including 412 being loaded up into a trailer before she was delivered here, and also 370 being unloaded here. Unfortunately, we haven't got anything for the center car, but you know, enjoy. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. DMS 51405 Same marquette and seat styling is what we are going for in 51412 This is a full seated saloon rather than a guards vehicle or the centre car This is DMBS 51363 at the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway. This is the guard span. We've converted a uh, disabled area. Excellent idea. Accessible for a ramp onto the guards. Guards area into here. Superb idea of what we'll be having on our DMU. tidy and through here we have TCL center car 59510 this is a second class part of the vehicle another excellent idea that we will be having on our DMU our center car when it comes out a bar area unfortunately not open today another excellent asset All the areas which will have our two operational and first class area very comfy seats 